from Pico's Boladrome in Franklin, Massachusetts. It's New England Candle Pins Winter Tournament 2014. In our second elimination show, Steve Reno of Southbridge rolls against Framingham's Rick Kamrowski. And in game two, Sean Sears rolls against his challenger, Lou Albergini of Raynham. Now let's roll with your hosts, Ed Dunn and Jay Horrigan. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. It's Series 2 of New England Candle Pins from Fecos Bowl of Joan, Franklin, Massachusetts. Alongside Jay Horrigan, I'm Ed Dunn. Jay, let's meet our bowlers. Okay, I'm with Steve Reno, Nevada. <laughs> and Nevada, yes, are, welcome to our show. It's Pleasure been a thrill. Be I've heard a lot about you. I hope it was good. Well, most of it was if good. If you talked to Dan Gothy, it, it might not have been. Well, the goth man's been suffering from a stomach flu, as we saw it last yes, week in our show. So Yes, he has. This is your first time on our show. That's correct. That's correct. So I'm hoping for a, a good performance today. don't want to let you guys down, but I didn't have too good of a week this week. So we'll see what happens, which uh, game I bring with me today. Well, we don't want to get into the details about your week. I think that's better talked about off camera. It was camera. all about the bowling. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Well, that's, I feel better already. So, Steve, you came in as our 15 seed, and your opponent today is Rick Kamrowski, who is our number two seed. Rick, how did you feel from practice this time versus your time here last month? I actually practiced better last, last month, uh, so I'm hoping that uh, I didn't perform very well under the lights. So hopefully uh, with the uh, not so good practice I'll bring it to the uh, the match well the entire Reno family is not unfamiliar to the lights so this is not nothing new territory we've watched his father bowl we're watching him bowl now do you feel like you've got a generational disadvantage yes I do yes I do I'm gonna go out and buy a bowling alley and practice <laughs> gentlemen let's shake hands let's get this started good luck to both of you Welcome back. Steve Reno is gonna start us off today on lane 16 Starts with the half Worcester right. Steve joining us today from uh, Southbridge, Massachusetts at a bogey lanes. He used to bowl a lot at American lanes back in the very tough house. Hey, and in between frames, I'd like to welcome Dan Gauthier from our Cano Pin sister channel show that's airing <laughs> with us and we're going to call this uh, Consolation Row right now since <laughs> you and I both played last week and we both didn't win all of our matches so a surprise you get to help us with our first match today. Thank you. Very familiar <laughs> for me to be behind the mic instead of in front of it. <laughs> Absolutely. It's easier from this side, isn't it? <laughs> it's definitely a lot less stressful. One seven eight ten with plenty of wood for Steve after the first ball. Steve was the was the founder of our kids show, Candlepin for Kids, when it started 11 years ago, and he did it for uh, eight years. So it was great to, to have him start the whole TV thing again, because it had been off the air for a long time. Well, that explains why he didn't get back to me this year when I wanted to try to help out after watching it last year, because he's not there anymore. <laughs> right? Yeah, you can contact myself or uh, Robbie Taylor. We have our own website, <laughs> CandlepinGeneration.com. You can go and reach out to any of us. And Rick Kamroski from Framingham, Mass. Lives uh, bowls out of Millis. Four horsemen left, takes out the 2-4, leaving the 1-7 with a piece of wood in front. Rick comes in as our number two seed with a 386 total. Have either of you guys bowled with uh, Rick before? Rick is one of the only bowlers out of the 16 that I don't know, I have to confess. Really? Yeah. How about you, Ed? I've only interviewed him. I haven't bowled with him. Okay. A little help coming from the back. One, three, seven. With Wood sit behind the three and next to the seven. Just 
just behind the head pin, leaving only that for a 10. Rick's the first uh, southpaw bowler we've had in this uh, we don't series have, of shows. We don't have many of them. Right. Tied after two, 17-17. Stanza number one is complete. Steve Reno back up on lane 16. You know, your last uh, last set of episodes, Champions, was a southpaw, southpaw though. Mm -hmm. John Boudreaux. Right, right. He graduated right. from our show after winning everything he could possibly win. <laughs> Decided to try with come, the adults come, now. Come win here. Sure, why not? That's a tough lead. For we Steve. welcome everybody. 3 9 10. With no wood. Tapping just the 3, leaving now the 9 10. box for Steve, kind of like the Manning family in football. The yeah. Reno family comes with notoriety and understanding that every spare leave is makeable in that household. There isn't a spare that comes up that says, no, he can't get that. In the first episode of your show that I watched last month, I heard you mention his father when you said the Reno right, mm -hmm. a particular leave that he would always make. Absolutely. I like that commentary. It made me keep watching that episode. It was good. I appreciate that. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, his father was a great bowler. And his father, if I remember right, used to almost always wear all black a lot of times when he bowled. Mm -hmm. Nine. Is that the reason you seven. wear black? <laughs> That's just because I'm chubby. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't Wooden show as much. clips the seven but leaves the Ooh, nine. Maybe Excellent that's try. a fashion yeah, tip no, that's a good, me. good try for Steve. Maybe you want to be a tiny bit lower on the wood. And bingo pin picked up for a ten. Steve's part of three generations now, too, because his father was a great professional bowler, and then Steve, obviously, and, and his son, who's been going up to the Worlds with our team the last couple of years. So, his son really fired the ball. I'd throw my shoulder out of joint if I tried to throw it that hard. Soft hit on the head pin pocket, but grabs nine, leaving only the 10 pin. Plenty of wood to the left. Does have clearance to hit it straight on. And he does. So it's a spare for Rick in the third frame. <laughs> yeah, he just got a spare on that lane. He doesn't want to give it up no, now. No, no. That's you don't why want I move Can you blame when you him? Get a mark. That's I like. Stay on the lane. It's hot. But Steve will be the first one to remind him, you got a spare. Move over. Filling <laughs> <laughs> the spare on 15 leaves the full horseman right with a piece of wood up near the head pin with the eight and back. His ball, he's either going to have to hit the wood in the head pin or come one three and go right around it. There he goes. Yep, went around it but clipped only the three pin. So you guys have a tough angle to watch it here, I notice. It's hard to tell if that ball is going to be in the pocket. Oh, you've got monitors. We have pin cams. And a great oh, nice bid for shot. a 10. Excellent shot. 10 pin rocking in the back, but it will be a 9. After 4, Rick Kimrowski leads by a score of 41 to 36. Once again, Steve Reno up on lane 16. Yeah, the pin cams have been, have been great. Uh, they've been great, especially for someone who, uh... Right on the head pin in the 1-3, leaving the 9-10, but this time a piece of wood squarely in front of the 10, with some space next to the 9, and now it's rolling back toward the edge of the pin plate, and probably will stop right on the lip. Who doesn't know as much about the game as, as like, the two of you? Going for the red line. Shot. Spun it and still nice clipped the spare. Up. Nice shot. Nice pickup. <laughs> So far, both guys now have a mark, getting a little more comfortable on the lanes. Sometimes you're better, like Steve just did, picking it in. And you get too close to the middle, and that wood can turn just enough where it misses one of the two pins that you don't expect it to. That yeah, was a good ball. I noticed last week in my wish that I could have done better performance that you were um, soliciting my son to join the <laughs> can open roll off ranks. <laughs> yeah, he's at 14. He's right in our prime demographic right there. <laughs> Triangle left, 2 4 5. Clean pickup for the spare. Two marks in a row. Putting a little pressure on Rick now to have to come back up and work from that. 
He was definitely trying to cheer you on. He might have cheered right when you were throwing the ball a couple times, but... <laughs> We have to work on his enthusiasm a little bit, but he's a, good kid. I, he's a wonderful boy, and he's, he wants to be proud of his father doing a game like this. And it was a pleasure to have him here for that series, and he made some friends back here in the gallery too. So it's it, it's a good thing. The sports in the hands of the kids now. You know, we have to keep promoting the youth leagues, make them larger. Those are going to be the customers of tomorrow and the pros of tomorrow. Oof. Seven pin left in the corner for a 10. And leaves it for a nine. So through five frames, Steve has a three pin lead, 6-9 with a piece of wood off to the side. Probably not playable, but it is in his line of sight. Right into the three pin, leaving only the five. Plays the wood, takes the ten. Two marks for Steve were big. I'll tell you, in a one-string match, and, and you know this after just finishing your game, mm -hmm. it goes by fast. It does. Five every up, five mark down, and every you're ten done. really counts. After six, it's Rick Kamowski in with 60, and Steve Reno with 63, plus this fill. Already in front by three, and adding six more to his lead, leaving the two, four, six, ten. It does. They, they, the games do fly by. Yeah. And they've got to even go faster for you guys when you're on the their bowling. Pin, but the piece of wood on the right got in the way and deflected the pin aside, leaving now the 6 10 for a 10. And grabs it. It's a shame that got in the way because that was a beautiful cut shot. Mm -hmm. But again, he got the 10, and that's big. I speak from experience. It's big. You don't want to give <laughs> pins away. <laughs> that, that gives Steve 79 through seven frames. On the head pin, light to the left side, leaving again the diamond to the right. Sorry, the triangle right, three, five, six. And Steve coming into today's match is our 15 seed. And picks it up with a little help for another spare. You know, when we finished the roll-off qualifying, I had a chance to look at the list of bowlers. Usually, the seedings are by talent, and generally your higher average bowlers should come in at the top, and your lower average bowlers should come in at the bottom. But in this case, Steve came in as the 15th seed because the mm. talent to try out for this show performed so well that everybody had a great night that made it to the show. Right. The high was 393. The low was, I think, 341. That's a very small window of range for 16 bowlers. 810 with a piece of wood in between for Rick. Almost grabs it, leaves just the 10 pin now. And it was particularly packed between 345 and 360, I remember. There were a lot of bowlers in that range. You had a lot of good names show up. You had a good, good turnout on the tryouts for this TV episode. Each tryout is getting bigger each month. And we did put the word out there that our prize fund was going to be a little bit larger this time. So we're drawing some people from 413, 603 area codes to come down and you know, give a shot at winning some prize money. And it's a great thing when you have that kind of a turnout. It's a very professional production. That was my first impression watching it. And uh, now that I'm here and see how many cameras you have, I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> Three, seven, nine, ten with a piece of wood in back is still there for a ten chance. Although we are Franklin.tv and we are Franklin Community Access, we aren't a low rate, low quality production company. We will give you everything you need. We have all the equipment as all the other shows do because of contributions from all of our subscribers that you can volunteer and you have complete access to these things. It's just a matter of going to your local town and saying, I want to volunteer, I want to be a part of it. 
As we make the turn for home, Steve Reno fills the spare with 89 plus the ball, to Rick Kamrowski with 77. You know what's going through Steve's head right now is just if you just put a really big fill or if you just get one more mark, you can almost effectively ice the game. Well, Rick's definitely frustrated, not even averaging 10 of a box right now through eight that you're almost pulling it tighter, you're almost squeezing it, you're not really giving it what you should. One, Oof. two, seven with some help in the back, but the wood wiggles it, said hello, but it will yeah. not say goodbye. It's another effect of the one string. You just come on for one string, and our kids go through this too. If you get off to a bad start, it's so easy to squeeze the ball tighter because mm -hmm. there's very little time to make up mistakes. And you, you know, everybody wants to go on and show what they can do. Right. Right. And if you punch out the half horse on your first ball, yeah, or a spread eagle. You're off to a bad start. You don't start. want to go on and have one, your one bad string, and that's all people see on TV. <laughs> Light on the 1-3 pocket, but some action in back is now leaving the 7-10 with at least three pieces of wood in play. And you, you had that, Dan, where you got off in your match. You had the, the strike followed by two spares. And the last spare I was so proud of. And then to go back and throw a bunch of 7s and 6s yeah. and 8s is just... Play the wood yeah. to spin it over, but could not clip the 7. That's can up in bowling. That's why right. everybody likes it. If it was easy and we were throwing 300 games, I think, you know, I might even get bored. But um, the frustrations are always there, mm -hmm. and you're always mm -hmm. trying to. How many times have all of us said at one point in our and bowling. Easy clip for a 10 right through the spot. I think I figured it out. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Two well, strings later, you're back to the drawing. I won't tease which show he's going to be on, but I once mm -hmm. did an interview for a school project with Dave Chesterkov, and his quote about can up and bowling was perfect. This game can only be played, not perfected. Exactly. Which means anyone can. Dave is uh, captain of the world's team I bowled on last year and captain of our Friday Three, protein. Three six pocket hit and gets to That's have awesome. only the 110 left. Piece of wood up against the head pin. The lefty that should carry it right over with easy contact. Got to hit the object pin. Oh. Right oh. over the 10 pin. Hit it straight. Had a chance to kick that over with the wood, but he hit it flush and went right over the 10 pin. So he picks up the 10 there. That's going to leave him with an 87. He's going to need double. We've yeah, seen a lot strikes. of things in our series, but in this series, we haven't seen a double strike yet, and nope. that's what we're going to need to see for Rick to have a chance to win this match. We're not going to see it. So. Four horsemen left plus the eight pin. Now just the one eight left for Steve Rick to finish this off. Steve is going to go on to face the winner of our next match between Sean Sears, the 10 seed, and Lou Albergini, the 7 seed. So we're going to have another upset. This is uh, in this series. It will be our third upset of the lower seed being a top seed. This time a 15 seed in Steve Reno beating Rick Kamrowski, a number two seed, 115 to 96. So another great match, and we'll be back on New England New England Candle Pins right after this. We're back for game two of our series. Jay, who do we have bowling with us today? Right over here, we have Sean Sears, although he did try to mess me up with his name earlier. <laughs> Sean, is the, this is your first time on our show. Yep. Um, so welcome to New England Candle Pins. Thank you. How are you feeling today? Uh, I'm feeling good. You know, warm-ups were going well, so I have a little bit of confidence. Now, where do, you, where do you bowl out of? I actually bowl out of Canal in Southampton. Okay, great, great. And Ed, who do you have with you? Sean coming in as the 10 seed is taking on the challenge of Lou Albergini, our 7 seed. Well, you qualified well with a 359. How did you feel coming into FICO's going into today's match? Pretty confident I'm ready to go. The lights aren't a uh, dis th discomfort for you. You've been on it many a time before. Yeah. So it should, it should be a good match. It should be a lot of fun. I uh, personally don't know Sean, but I'm sure he'll have his A game with him, and I'm sure I'll need mine to beat him. 
So it should be good. As you've seen in the previous show, sometimes you come in with your A game and then the pins yeah, you don't do tumble. The pins are going to fall. You know, the pins, uh, each house is different. Uh, each ball works different in every house. So, you know, you never know what's going to happen in candle pin. That's what makes it fun. It's 10 boxes to the finish. Gentlemen, shake hands. Let's get rolling. Here's going to start us off in match number two on lane 15. It was an interesting first shot by Sean. Quietest ball we've seen all <laughs> it day. It was very quiet. Unfortunately, he did not get a pin down. I was going to say, he forgot the ball. That, that was like a golf shot. One, two, ten. Piece of wood back by the ten pin. Could be helpful. Sean could qualify for the bowler who traveled the furthest. Coming from Chicopee, Massachusetts, mm. here to Franklin. Getting the head pin now, leaving just a 210 and an eight. Aaron Spiller, who's going to be in a later episode, will be coming from Holyoke. He's probably a little right. bit further. Yeah. Both west of Springfield. Phil Clough, I think, came from Warren. Yep. So we've yes. got a lot of full three representation. Yeah. Sean now on 16, punches out the diamond left corner, leaving a one, two, three, five, six, nine, ten. A piece of wood against the two. Just shows you how New England candle pins have uh, grown. And, and Ed, you and off the wood in the back and almost clips the head pin. You and Dan were talking about it in our first match about the number of uh, people that were here uh, for the qualifying. <laughs> well, I tried tying him out when he bowled me. I know. But unfortunately, I tied myself out. There goes Phil, <laughs> our, our week one champion. That's what happens when you win the show. You stick around to fetch pins for the next show. Exactly. Big hand right. for Phil Clough, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that will earn Phil an extra five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Why am I announcing? If I had known that, I would have gone and gotten the pins. Sorry, what do you need? Lob line touch. I've got a monopoly pressure. bank of three thousand over here. That I can pass out. <laughs> At least Ed, you were, left. Ed, you were in charge of the money this week. <laughs> but just getting back to the point of the bowlers coming, you know, from Chicopee, Holyoke, Warren, uh, Phil being from Warren. Uh, you guys have both addressed that about the number of people that had come uh, for the qualifying mm -hmm. and the quality of bowlers. You did have good quality. That was uh, clear across the board. There were a solid 10 people who didn't make it that could have easily made it, you know. I talked to a couple of those that hadn't made it, um, that had been on our previous two mm -hmm. um, tournaments. Lou starts off with a nine, and Jay, I've got to notice right away that Lou has represented our old show, Pokemon Candle Pins, Correct. from Fico's Bowl, with his own attire. I kind of want one of those shirts. Punches the two pin full, but gets enough action to clear out the middle row, leaving the one, three, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is a very. He takes wow. it down with it. <laughs> full on the right side and clears out the entire rack of the back row. Last to go, I believe, was the eight and nine. And that's how you come back after a tough first ball. A great spare by Lou. Sean back up now on lane 15. Lou also woke the neighbors. Who's a scary opponent? With this, with this shout out there. Sean oh, is not Sean. to be intimidated. Comes back with a nine drop, leaving just the four pin. <clears throat> but unfortunately, let that one get away. Gotta make your single pins when you're on at this level. I wouldn't mention that, Ed, to uh, Dan right now. The single pins, missing the single pins, mm. might still be a little raw. That might have been the only thing I actually did well. <laughs> yeah, it, might it, was, be. it was 10 minutes after me, so can't do that. Yeah. Keep it that far out of reach. Comes back oh. with a strike. Right on the one three pull. I see your spare with a strike. Come get me. That's called the always ball in candle pin bowling. You miss a single, you always follow it up with a strike. <coughs> sort of an unwritten Great rule. Great fill, Sean. Unfortunately, there wasn't a spare. <laughs> the third. But maybe he sets himself <laughs> up for maybe your first double of the day, though. 
Lou now filling in lane 15, punches the half list of right. And only two. The question is, who's more intimidated by their mark at this point? Yeah, exactly. Lou has a very rapid fireball. He does, it's a heavy ball too. I mean, it really slams the pin. Punching out the one, two, and leaving the two on the deck and not getting anything else behind it. Four, five, six, seven, ten with a piece of wood for a ten box. Flush on the red Oof. line, leaving seven for an out. With the fill, Lou was beating the clubhouse in the second frame, 21 to 17. Now opposite a strike. And matches Ooh. it with a strike of his own. Neighbors got to sleep a little that time, though. Unless the strike woke him up. And that hit the uh, bounce he when he released the ball it, before yeah. At the release point and still was able to impact the pocket in the right spot. And there was no doubt about it. As soon as the ball hit, they were all falling down. Yeah. Sean back Double. up on lane 15 to fill his strike with Double. nine. And a piece of wood in front to make a makeable spare. Yeah, it's kind of wood we all want. Well done by Sean Sears. Picks up the pin for a spare. Fill of 10 on the mark. See, I predicted a high scoring match here. Bullers just needed two boxes to get warmed up. Used to the lights. Sean's three game total uh, qualifying was at 357, which made him the 10th seed coming into this tournament. Into the 1 3 pocket, leaving the 4 6 10. And that piece of wood is flush against the back of the 4 pin. That does what would help for him if he can catch that left side. That is a help, Ed. Went or to the can, right side. can be a help. More help than a hindrance. When you've got a split like that and there's a piece of wood lodged behind it, you've got the ability, if you hit that pin on the front side of it, to give it a better oh, nice chance to up. kick straighter to the left or to the right than just trying to cut it without a piece of wood behind you. Okay. Makes the 10 and sits down now. And Lou steps up to fill his strike in the fifth. Into the 1 3 light, though, leaving the 2 5 8. And Dan, your prediction before we went on air was. <laughs> A 142 for Lou. I'm sorry, I thought it was 242. No, no, oh, it was 142. 142. Okay. It's going to need to work. That would have been the half worst to left if they had a full rack up, leaving now just the five pin. It's almost, I mean, that is the kind of ball you want to throw to make that shot, a heavy ball to carry the two back pins. And picks up the single pin for a 10. So now after the fills, after four, we can report that Lou Albuquerque does have a slight lead of 47 to 46. But now he was the opposite of Mark in the fifth but now has a chance to get back into it with a mark oh, possibility in the sixth frame. Two four pocket, but is still able to have enough force behind that to get the back action to knock out the head pin, leaving the three six with wood out of the way. I don't know if we caught it on camera when Lou was tying his shoes. Those are yep. self-made shoes. Uh, Lou makes his own bowling shoes. That's pretty cool fact. Well, Straight in on the three pin. <laughs> Goth man yep. for that one. He's got his own uh, bowling alley in his basement too. It's a miniature size, but I think it gives him some unfair practice advantage here. <laughs> and into the wood for. <laughs> Just hit the uh, foul button. Foul button on the front. Nope. <clears throat> I hope it gives him a nine. Sean will be very yeah. happy to go up and hit the foul. Oh, absolutely. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, thing about, the fun thing about two bowlers <laughs> that don't bowl at Fico is trying to figure out how to negotiate the buttons, and Sean knew where the foul button was right away, and ran right over and grabbed it. We need to thank Sean for his help there. <laughs> After six, it's 73 to 66. Sean Sears with a lead, and again the four pin by itself. Let's see if he remembers how to hit this one for a spare. Think of the nice first ball Sean's thrown his last five boxes. It was something like nine strike, nine, nine, nine. He's really getting the nines. Unfortunately, he still left the four pin. <laughs> He's had five chances to hit it. 
I mean, it's funny how wood works too, because the one time he had wood in front of it, he made it, but the ball was dead there on the pin. Go. You know, it's an extra piece mm-hmm. of confidence, I always say. Now he picks up a single pin. And watch, him, watch him throw the strike again. <laughs> well, you know what? I love the, the drop nine, miss and throw a strike. I'll take, it's the I'll take that ball. every other frame. If you give me a nine for five frames and a strike for the other five, I'll yep. take it. Three pin pushed straight through. A little bit of action back there, but you got the one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, Dan, pieces of wood back there. you were talking about the qualifying and everything. The interesting, as I said, Sean, uh, Ooh, nice right shot. in the right spot, but unfortunately the eight pin was refusing to go down. A Sean qual- qualified with a 357 total. He yep. was a tenth seed. Lou was just two pins better at 359, and he was the seventh seed. Yeah, just two pins separated. Jammed up right in there. And and you, you're talking about a difference of three spots there. See, that that does show you, yep. you know. And yeah, I talked to one bowler who's been on the two previous shows. Rob pinched in. He missed by one pin. Yep. Qualified. And my TV match was a tie, so I mean, it's just so right, much evidence. Right. Every pin. Every pin counts. That would be the Reno left right there. Hey, there you go. One, two, four, six, eight, ten, and it's still there. Pre- is that a preview for who's coming up next match? <laughs> oh, and almost converts it for a ten, leaving the nine pin. That's a big nine. Ten pin though. for a nine drop. And we've got a bunny in the hole on sixteen. We got to clear out. Was not his first ball. We've got some lumber back there, and we'll just take a moment to reset the lane. We would call that a re rack in 10 pin language. It's good to see all the shows slowly emerging, even if, if, even if these shows are done by public access stations or bowlers or bowling alley, because the quality now is so good. All the nice high def cameras. And they're covering every demographic now. We got a kid show, you have an adult scratch show, which you guys are doing, which is has some good quality bowlers, and then an adult handicap show that they're doing over at New Palace. So it's nice to see the options for bowlers. And and you're getting the turnout, which is good. It shows people enjoy it. 2-5 is left for a spare, and he converts it. Which As we make the turn for home, Blue Aberghini is 85 plus a ball. Deshaun Sears with 93. Which we'd like to remind our viewers that if you enjoy what you're watching today, the best way to show your appreciation and that you do enjoy it is to contact your local cable access TV station and volunteer. You can volunteer in numerous ways you, just by contacting them, seeing what kind of help they'll need. They, you can put your own shows on. They'll help you put your shows together. You can work behind the scenes, in front of the scenes. Ooh, nice Beautiful shot. shot for a spare. Sean had the one, two, four. <laughs> Played out the right side on the first ball, got the rest on the second with no wood up there to help him. Use the side wall to catch the last pins. Yeah, the five. Great shot to carry the five pin at the end. That's hey, always a see, tough pin. Did hey, you see we were in a flow? I stopped talking right now. I knew that <laughs> spare was coming. When ten pins fall down, you have to be quiet so I can tell them what happened. One three pocket hit light, but is able to pull up nine again. Something like his fifth nine, something like that. A lot yeah. of nine drops. And picks it up for the spare. He's learned how to pick up the single pin this match, which is good. Now he's got one more ball to Boy, throw. Going to get 130 probably out of him. Yeah, and that's big. I mean, if uh, Lou had practically tied the match up in the eighth with his mark and a right. big fill, now he's going to need Lou's going to need two marks, and they're going to have to be big marks mm-hmm. as long as we get a reasonable fill. And you would expect that. He's been getting eight and nine. Sean's on his final first ball, ball, although that's a little off. Delivers yeah, him pin. five more, 127. Not out of reach, definitely. No, two marks. That's our highest score so far this tournament. It is. And I did take the under on your prediction. Yeah. <laughs> Not because I don't think he will get 142, but because I think these lanes are hitting a lot harder than the ones up in practice. Yeah. And we both experienced these lanes firsthand, and they're not producing high numbers. You really got to have your game. Oh, really got to oh. have it. And there's another nine drop. I'm not going to blame it on the lanes. I actually like these lanes. Eight pin with no wood. I blame it on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not the ball that's bad or the pins. That's bad. <laughs> Obviously, it's the bowler that's showing the ball that's causing the score. Nice. And he picks it right up. Now we got a match. I mean, the first one's a hard one. Get that out of the way. But he will need another mark. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Needs 23 pins to tie, 24 to win. 
So what is the 10-22-30, Mr. Trivia? Knows Lou Arrugini more than the rest of us. 10, 20, it's on 30. his shoe, it's on his shirt, it's in red, white, and yeah, blue. Yeah, that's a good question. Huh? He used to have a python on the shoes that he made. I don't know what 10, 20, 30 is. Six fill, leaving the four horsemen right with a piece of wood in front of the head pin. Near oh. the three, it might not be helpful for him, but the way his ball goes, he might be able to carry that around the wall. Or go right at the head pin and kick the whole thing out. He went outside. Here comes the spin. Falling. But it will leave him with the 310. And he will nail that down for a 120. Good match. Very Great good match. match. Very good match. Our two highest scores of the tournament. A 127 for Sean Sears. Lou will end up with a 120, which will advance Sean Sears into our championship match. And he'll take on the 15th seed of Steve Reno. So it's a 10 and a 15 in the final. Another lower seed beating a higher seed. So after that match with Sean Sears moving on, we will be back after this. And we're back for our championship for this series. Sean Sears is taking on Steve Reno in our final match. Now, Sean, you've had a chance to watch Steve. You've had a chance to play. How do you feel after your string going into this? Um, I'm feeling really comfortable. Uh, the last time I bowled Steve, he actually beat me by 40 pins. So uh, looking for a little bit of redemption now. You're going to have to make your single pins this time, though. Yeah, that four pin is killing me. <laughs> but you got it with the two pins. So now you've figured out, of the bowlers we've seen so far, you have the quietest delivery of all the bowlers. That first shot you threw at the beginning of the match was just ghost, <laughs> yeah. but the next one was almost even just as quiet. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that first one, I don't know where it went, though. It just kind of disappeared. We gave you a mulligan on it. Oh, okay. That's good, then. <laughs> and, Steve, you were able to just watch Sean bowl. Um, so what do you think going into your match? Well, I hope I bowl a, a little better than I did against Rick, but I, I know Sean from the Western Mass uh, Pro Bowlers Tour. Sean's made the top five, uh, top four actually in the last two events. So I know I got my hands full and he bowled well against Lou. So I'm hoping for a real good match. Well, that's good. We all are. We're really looking forward. This should be one of our really tremendous matches that we've had uh, during this entire series that we've been doing since last summer. It's 10 boxes to a champion. Let's shake hands and let's get rolling. Okay. Steve Reno is going to start us off on lane 16 for our championship match. into the 3-6 pocket, leaving the four horsemen left. Piece of wood against the four that nudged it just a little bit, and a piece of wood space behind the head pin. Ooh. Takes the head pin on the outside, but spins it around, leaving just the four. And picks up the 10. Now, we did have a survey last series, Jay, with our shot of the series being, I think it was the 410 with no wood in the eighth box, which was a match winner for somebody. I forgot who it was. Oh, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think after last match with Lou Albergini having the one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, ten that he made for a tremendous spare, it could be the shot of this series so far on the book as the best one that was made. It wasn't in a crucial place, but it was in a fantastic shot to begin with. I we'll would see agree if with we you. We can top that before the night's over. I would agree with you. And a nine in the box. Dan, do we have any predictions from you here? Oh, well, Sean was throwing such a good first ball in the last match that um, it's funny. These two guys they match up a lot, so they're comfortable bowling each other. It's not like mm -hmm. they don't know each other. They're both right, the right. I wouldn't be surprised if we see another game where they're both in the 120s here. And as soon as I say that, we right start up with the a one. <laughs> John goes to the six pin. Yeah. So well on our way, we've, we've got 119 to go. Yeah. <laughs> Into the head pin for a good recovery, leaving only the three nine. Now 
I can see that three pin has a looks like a smudge or a, yeah. a mark on the top. So that must have been one of the victims of Lou Albergini's first <laughs> ball that he, <laughs> he broke it in half. <laughs> We'll know if it falls down later on its mm -hmm. own, you know, when it sets up the other way. And oh. carries it for the 10 using the wood. That's, we were saying, uh, Nick and I, when we were doing the first week shows, Ed, when you were bowling, that's the difference when both you guys were bowling. That's the difference between you guys and just the occasional casual bowlers. You know, casual bowlers won't pick up those yeah. pins that are, are, are right, you know, lined up one in front of another because they won't wouldn't know how to do it. if they pick it up it's out of luck it's also the first thing to go when you're struggling is your ability to get tens it's right usually how every good bowler knows if they're just kind of in a funk you leave a lot of eights and sevens and you're just scratching your head and another nine the end of two we're tied with pair of tens and pair of nines 19 each steve reno back up now on lane 16. Right into the one-two pocket for us to right. Great shot by Steve. Steve's a competitor. I mean, he's a guy you really have to put away if you get up on him, because he'll come back on you. Well, after that strike, we figured out that Steve has now found the reset button as fast as Sean knows the foul button. <laughs> He won't be happy with that ball, but he's going to be happy with the results. That's actually one of his better leaves right there. One, three, six yep. left for a spare. And the wood's coming off the wall to grab it. that for a spare. You could see it coming. Opponent, you don't want to see that coming, but you could see it coming. <laughs> the express train coming out of back bay, rolling up to knock out that head pin. And I know how it feels if you're Sean, you have a big smile on your face, but in your head you're going, Grr. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you're saying, nice shot out loud, and you're censored in the internal. Can't quote what you're really saying, but the good thing about bowlers is they're professional and they have sportsmanship, and that's yes. the good thing about Candlepin bowling. One, two, nice eight, spare. picked up for a spare. Nicely done. Yeah, nice pickup by Sean. So now they are, they're starting to get back on track for the what I predicted, a couple games in the 120s. You mentioned earlier, Dan, that sometimes bowlers can sense they're getting into a fight if they're not making their tens, but <laughs> the four pin. you only get five chances <laughs> to bowl, so you might catch that funk being in like the sixth or the eighth exactly. box, which is your fourth time up. This, I laugh, this is funny because it's the four pin. Sean's got the four pin. Been leaving this drop. pin left and right. Will he get it this time? No! <laughs> it's in his head. I mean, left he, it. Again. But it gets in your head. if He's, He said that when we interviewed <laughs> yeah. him before this mm -hmm. match. If he took out his duck pin ball, he would have been able to get that, though. <laughs> if there's a particular pin that you've missed more than three or four times in a string, I mean, you, you know what that gets. It. Yep. It, it's going to be the pin you're going to leave every time you drop nine from that point on. It's just Until you make it, it gets... He, he laughs about it. It's all you can do. Laugh yep. and forget about it. Well, nobody wants to throw nine and just hit the reset button and say, I'm not going to get that twice. You at least want to take a crack at it a couple of times. Unless it's warm-up. And Sean's had pretty practice with that four pin. So hopefully next time he gets it, it goes down on the first ball. And there is what we would call, Jay, the Uxbridge leave in Fico's. Okay. Because from here, Uxbridge is halfway to Worcester okay. from Providence. So it's not the full half That's Worcester. Me. It's a quarter Worcester. We call it the Uxbridge. And he wow. picked it up for a spin. Here. Wow. Fantastic shot. That's what we would call here at Vico's a spare. <laughs> That's a, that was great. <laughs> I was speechless on that one. Punched out just the three pin, came back on the one two pocket as if the three pin were there, and punched the head pin right across and cleared it out like it was a strike. And comes back and fills it high on the one two pocket, leaving the triangle right. Three, five, six. So now with the mark originally. After four, it's 50 to 47 for Steve Reno. And he has put up a pair of marks in the fifth and sixth. That's what he wanted to do. That's, he said he was slumping before he came in, but that's the kind of bowler he is. He can string them together when he's hot like that. Mm -hmm. So now with three marks in a row, what would that have been the old days? $50 a bonus point? Yeah, it's actually he's up to four now in a row. <laughs> now you have to $100 a bonus yeah. point. 
That reminds me of someone I saw in week one putting those marks together. Early, though. Earlier in the match. I don't remember who that was. Yeah, yeah. They come and go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. We'll see. Too soon, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Still bitter. <laughs> Very bitter. Very bitter. <laughs> Four, six, seven Ooh. for a spare. High was, in the four pin and almost grabbed the six. It was an interesting play. I was wondering if he'd go there or try to use one end of the wood by mm -hmm. that. Might have been and his other with the option. Wood, he picked up the six pin for the ten. And he just throws his hand up because I think yeah. he saw that where he hit it on that one would have gone right into the other two pins. Mm -hmm. It was a viable play where he did, though, because he had wood yep. behind the two, and it almost came forward and took the uh, yep. four. That's the case earlier, Jay, where we were talking about wood being helpful or hurtful. Right. If that wood behind the four was right against it, that would have helped him kick that pin straight across to catch the six pin to make that spare. One, three, eight, ten, no wood right now for Sean. Pretty difficult shot. And the difficulty is catching mm -hmm. the eight pin, and unfortunately he left it. So he's got himself in a bit of a hole right now at the halfway point. He's against a mark. He's not on a mark. And he's got four blocks to make up some ground. It's at least 11 pins, plus what Steve throws on this ball will determine the actual score at 77 to 66, plus one for Steve. Steve if Steve can get a couple more marks, he'll be threatening a nice high That's 130s right. or 140 game. Straight on the head pin, but enough action on that ball to carry everything to the right, leaving the 4-7 with a piece of wood that might come over and help, but probably will stop right there. Steve's got a very unique delivery. And carries it for the spare. He's had to change his delivery a lot over the course of his career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When he was a younger bowler, he was one of the hardest throwers you ever would see. And then he had a shoulder injury at one point. And um, I'll give him a lot of credit. He worked harder than almost anybody I've ever seen through the course of one or two years to completely re reinvent his style and be a much more slower in control guy now. Almost a spread eagle, plus the nine pin in back. Three pin fill. This could be the opening that Sean will need. Cut the two pin light, slid it right across. Nestled between the six and the three, but nothing else fell. It does set yourself up, though, hopefully for an eight or better. Oof. And takes the triangle with the wood in the back, leaving seven. 105. Yeah, the traditional bowler usually holds the ball kind of straight out and releases it with some right. type of angle on their wrist. But in Steve's case, he's almost cupping it at the yep. start and then twisting his wrist. And on the delivery, it's spinning almost completely to the left against the grain of the pins. Right. So it's giving that a lot more torque oh. on the ball for those cut shots and to be able to slice some extra pins around. Even on a flush hit, he's got a lot of spin on the ball to try to get extra pins. Yeah. Nine drop for Sean, leaving the 10 pin in the corner. It's not the four pin, so he'll probably be all over it. And he is. Nice spare, spare by Sean. It's funny how that gets in your head. <laughs> it's all over it if it's not the four. So Sean will be hoping for another nine or a strike. As long but as it's hopefully not a four, four pin. pin. Right. <laughs> Unless he's got wood in front. Boom. Into the one three pocket, but leaving Diamond left plus this triangle left plus the seven. Two, four, five, seven. He's going to need this mark to have a chance to come back into it, though. He's got to have this shot. Played it flush on the two pin. Carry the five. Leaving the four, seven. At least he got himself in range. He obviously has to right. hope that Steve doesn't go up there and throw two marks. Mm -hmm. He can maybe handle one. Hopefully. And as we make the turn for home, Dan, we are at 105 for Steve Reno and 90 for Sean Sears. Sean's given himself a chance. He's yep. within 50, although, you know, like you said, Dan, if Sean throws up a mark or two here, it's over. But. Again, there's that case of that ball going straight into what would be the half horse to left for most people. He got enough spin on it to have something go over and kick out the 10 pin. And the corner on the side. So he's got the one, three, five, six, nine for a spare, just inside the head pin. We went right around it. He would have plucked the five right. out on that ball. One of the 
the toughest things you deal with if you throw the ball like Steve does is the changing alley surfaces mm -hmm. from house to house. Some of them being synthetic or wood, the ball might react and grab differently and it can take you a few boxes to adjust. Absolutely. And the 2-4 pocket gets a lot of action with that ball we're referring to. And now he's got the 1-9 with a piece of wood rolling behind the 1. Now off to the side, up against another piece of wood out of the way. But both pieces of wood are legal. Bless you. Excuse me. Takes the 1 oh, to try oh, to clip oh. the 9 on the way by and hit it right over it. And as tough of a break as that is for Steve, it's also the kind of break that Sean needs. So right. now you can put up two marks and... Yep. 123. So I keep Sean the window open <laughs> ever so slightly for Sean. The window would have been a lot wider if he got that spare in the eighth. But Correct. he's going to need two marks yep. now to win. There's no two ways around it. Under the one-two pocket, getting some action. Seven, nine, ten with some wooden back. Oh boy! <laughs> all that wood is legal, that is, that is and just, all of it is in play. That is just a mess. This is one of those cases where you might actually want to hit the cap of that furthest piece yeah. of wood on the right and try to slide the other two to the left and hope the ball carries the wood behind it. I think I agree. Here he goes. Nope. Further in between right. the caps. Took out the two in the back. And now the seven pin catches it. So he's down 23 with one to go. You guys that know your math double well strike. enough, it means a double strike. Get Again, the first one. <laughs> something we haven't do. seen yet That's in right. this series. <laughs> Get the first we one. We have to see one now. Oh, we made Oop. it interesting though. We got the four Oof. pin out of there, but unfortunately left the 10. takes the 10-pin for a spare. He's deadly on singles when they're the 10-pin. Every pin, except, except, except for that four. Yeah. He's going to end up with a good average for his two shows well yeah. in the yeah. 120s probably. Solid. Just ran into somebody a little hotter. There's no defense in bowling. <laughs> it's a popular line. It's just offense. Into the two-pin pocket, spinning it around for six more. A total of 116. Ended up being a, a uh, seven-pin match. Uh, so, we finish uh, this championship match here with Steve Reno Nevada <laughs> winning today's show with a 123 over Sean Sears, 116. So, Steve Reno Nevada will move on to our championship show and he will in a join, couple of weeks. And he will join Phil Clough in that finals, and we have to have a couple more weeks to find out who their opponents will be. We'll come back and talk to both bowlers and wrap things up right after this. And we're back to talk to our bowlers. A fantastic match we had in our championship. Steve Reno, congratulations on winning that Thank match. You. Tell me how you felt, especially with that one pin first <laughs> when you hit that, and then when you were able to hit the reset button for that great spare afterwards. Well, obviously I wasn't happy about the one, Phil. <laughs> it can be very frustrating to, to any candlepin bowler. But to, to come back and make the shot is a big sigh of relief. And then, you know, to get a decent fill, I think I got seven or eight on it. That definitely was one of the key parts of the match. I think Sean missed a single by, the wind could have knocked it down, it was so close. And then uh, I opened the door again with that three fill seven box towards the end, so I opened the door back up. So those were probably the three key parts of the whole match. I was very fortunate to get the win. Sean's, Sean's a great, great up and coming bowler. I've only known, known him a short time, but he's always in the mix. Throws a really nice smooth ball, and I, I definitely foresee good things for him. And Jay, how did four pin do today? I well, I'm not sure, Sean. But other than the four pin, you knocked them. <laughs> you had single pins. You knocked them. You take them out, no problem. 
That four pin just kept looking at you and laughing back. Yeah, I'm going to go set up a bunch of pins right now and just go practice that over and over and over again. But, hey, you know what? I gave it a ride, and, you know, I love bowling against Steve. It's always a great matchup when I'm bowling with him. Well, it, w it was an excellent match. Uh, I, both of you performed very well, obviously, in your, your two preliminary matches earlier in the show. You both did a tremendous job. Um, and, and we congratulate both of you for advancing to the finals of this show. Um, I, I did want to, before we present uh, both of you with your winnings, I did want to remind all our viewers out there that if you enjoyed what you saw today and you want to find no way to support us, I would ask you to contact your local access channel volunteer. Whether you want to be in front of the camera, behind the camera anyway, the best way to support this show and other shows like this is to go to your local cable access channel and volunteer and help out. And Sean, as our runner-up, you do win $25. And congratulations. We hope to see you back in our next series. Well, I'll be back. And Ed, do you have something for Steve? Absolutely, Steve. As your winner, you get $75 you. for today. Thank you very much. You have a chance to come back with Phil Clough, who won the last series, to come back for our championship show later on. And at that point, maybe you'll be able to do it one more time. I like that. Bring my bowling up another notch, but I'm very fortunate. Looking forward to it. And Sean, congratulations on a 33 pin improvement from your last defeat against Steve. You only <laughs> lost by seven this time. So maybe the next time you come back in a month and do it again, maybe you guys have a better turnout for it. Thank you. Thank you. For Jay Horrigan, and special thanks to Dan Gauthier from our Candle Pin Network to sit in with us this series. I'm Ed Dunn alongside Jay Horrigan from Fico's Bowler Drome. This has been New England Candle Pins, and we'll see you back here next time for more great bowling action. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.